These are the uh, retracts that I installed uh, to replace the stock unit uh, before I ever maidened this plane. Uh, I got these from PWRC uh, for around 50 bucks and they were pretty much a bolt-in replacement. Uh, they're much, they're much uh, cleaner, they're much tighter um, than the stock retracts and of course have uh, the Oleo suspension. Uh, I actually replaced the stock springs with much softer ones and it seems to be uh, work pretty well. However, even these better units have a fair amount of twist and slop forward and back. Here is the uh, Corsair with the retract removed and I wanted to point out that in my case I have already taken a quarter inch drill bit to these two front mounting uh, studs and removed about uh, by twisting a a quarter inch drill bit in my fingers removed about an eighth of an inch of the post to increase the forward rake when they are in the uh, extended position. Uh, this definitely helps um, and I'll point out that uh, you can see here that I've actually bent the strut slightly uh, to the outside so that when it retracts it retracts further up into the well uh, to compensate for the forward rake and this actually works okay okay here we have all three units side by side on the right is the stock unit on the far left is the PWRC unit and in the center the RC lander uh, you can clearly see the 100 degree uh, uh, sweep of the RC lander with the forward rake already. Uh, clearly it's too short, but it also came set on the shorter setting. Uh, and we'll look at that a little bit later, but for right now, let's compare. Clearly, the... Uh, the stock unit is much faster and much less scale. Uh, the PWRC is better. The RC lander is much slower and much more to scale. Also, it's uh, important to note that <clears throat> looking at the stock unit, uh, there's a considerable slop forward and back and also uh, a considerable amount of twist okay uh, the re well, that was the biggest reason I replaced the stock ones before I ever flew this plane uh, the PWRC uh, again is a fair amount of slop forward and back and a fair amount of twist it was better than this when uh, when it was new, but it's uh, it's loosened up. Okay, uh, the the RC lander unit there is literally no slop forward and back, and almost no perceptible slop side to side. Another problem with the stock units is the little pin that causes it to uh, rotate as it retracts. Uh, uh, they often stick uh, and on the PWRC unit I've used a washer uh, to uh, alleviate that and occasionally they still hang up. Uh, the RC lander unit has this cool little linkage which completely eliminates that whole problem. Uh, anyway, well, let's look a little more closely. The stock unit in place and I won't retract it because it's actually the wrong side but again you can see the amount of slop in in the thing uh, both forward and back and also uh, radially here you can see uh, the stock unit in front and the PWRC unit in the rear but you can see the additional forward rake that I added by modifying the mounting point slightly.
Here I've marked the approximate center line of the strut at the base uh, of the stock unit, and I've placed the uh, I've placed the, uh, the RC lander unit in the in the mounting uh, hole here, and it's clear that neither the front or the rear uh, mounting holes line up. Uh, clearly, I'm going to have to make some uh, uh, some modif uh, modifications here. Probably a couple of uh, aluminum strips is what I'm thinking. Uh, from the side here, uh, you can see the considerably uh, greater forward rake. Uh, keeping in mind that the... Uh, this RC lander unit in front here is uh, needs to be extended uh, a fair amount, so uh, it'll be a dramatically dramatically the uh, wheel will end up dramatically farther forward once it's extended to the correct length. Uh, again, a pretty simple thing. Um, like I said, the RC lander came set at the shorter setting, and uh, it's a simple simple process to uh, extend it out. Uh, but the the uh, the strut will have to be extended uh, at the trunnion, uh, which is usually a simple thing. Um, so I'll look. Uh, we'll look a little more closely at that. So here I've removed the uh, the foam tire that came with it. Uh, immediately of note is that there are two, in fact, two two grub screws holding the axle in instead of the usual one. Also, if you can see here, uh, the pin in the suspension strut is set on a sh on uh, the shortest position, and so I'm going to remove that and reset it, and we'll see what the length looks like. Also of note is that there are in fact two grub screws holding the strut, uh, the oleo on the strut. Uh, there's actually three holes. Uh, and it may we may be able to get the length we need here just by loosening those and extending the oleo out. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've uh, I've moved the uh, oleo strut pin into the long position, and uh, it looks like uh, that makes uh, from the mounting uh, plate face to the center line of the axle about 97 and a half millimeters. Uh, still too short, I think. Uh, let's uh, check what the stock unit is. Okay, so it uh, looks like the stock unit from the uh, the face of the mounting plate to the axle center line is about 111 millimeters. So we're, we're kind of short on the uh, RC landers. But let's see what we can do with that. Okay, by simply uh, loosening the two grub screws on the strut, in the oleo and extending it out to the uh, to the farthest extent possible with the with the strut, uh, we're, we're still about we're at about 102 millimeters, so we're about nine millimeters shy. So it looks like uh, it looks like it'll require uh, replacing the strut with a longer strut, but uh, again, not too big of a deal. Uh, so I'm thinking that this is not uh, this is definitely not a drop-in replacement. Uh, however, it does not look like it's particularly difficult to do. So we'll look at that more closely. Uh, one last thing, uh, two last things. Here you can clearly see the greater uh, forward rake of the RC lander units, which is a big plus with these warbirds. Um, the other thing is uh, that I measured the strut diameter, which is only three millimeters. Uh, my thinking is that if uh, if it's going to have to get extended, that I would probably drill everything out to uh, to uh, four or five millimeters, and uh, use use a uh, perhaps go to four millimeters and use a four millimeter motor shaft, which would be nice and hard and will not bend. Okay, so that's uh, that's a little preview of uh, 
of uh, the RC Lander uh, 100 degree all metal retracts with 90 degree rotating and uh, I think that this is a very doable uh, high quality mod for um, uh, for the Dynam Warbirds uh, in my case the Corsair and also my Hellcat, which suffers from the same problem, really crappy, flimsy, loose retracts that bend all the time. Uh, so, we'll look at it more closely. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, document uh, what I do to install these things, uh, and I'll get back to you.